What's up y'all, welcome back to Bass Fishing Declassified. In this video, I wanna share the three rules of fall swim bait fishing. Let's get into it. The first rule of fall swim bait fishing is to try to pick a swim bait that is either pretty small or pretty big. I don't have a lot of success anymore on swim baits in the four to five inch range. Instead, I catch a lot of fish on these small two and a half to three inch swim baits or the six plus inch swim baits. I find that a lot of these fish are getting pretty conditioned to swim baits in general and they'll follow the bait a lot and not commit if the bait is again in that middle ground size. And a couple of baits I've been throwing a lot this past couple of years is both the smaller swim baits like this Mega Bass Spark Shad and then these bigger glide baits. For that Mega Bass Spark Shad I'm throwing the three inch size and I'll pull it out of the package here. It's a really small profile bait as a lot more finessey paddle tail on the back that has a lot more subtle action and the way i make it even a little bit more subtle than that is pairing it up with our core tackle finesse tush the finesse tush has a two out hook has an eighth ounce of lead there and you can also use the 3 16 ounce size and what i'm doing is basically inserting that finesse tush into that three inch spark shad and what that does is it gives you a really compact profile where you don't have the head of the jig head hanging out of that swim bait, which makes this even more finessey, more compact, because you don't have that extra, like maybe quarter to half an inch of a jig head hanging out. And that gives that bait a really nice profile. It also gives it a little bit different swimming action. It keels a little bit differently, which those fish aren't used to seeing. So whenever you're dealing with fish that are in really clear water and they're feeding on really small bait fish, that little three inch spark shot will get the job done. Now, if you're on a lake with bigger gizzard shad or just dirtier water in general, that's when you can go to a bigger glide bait style bait. One that I always am recommending to guys now, especially if you're just getting into glide bait fishing, is this Clutch Eco. It's a relatively inexpensive <laughs> glide bait compared to other handmade glide baits, and it's also extremely durable. The one thing about this bait is you can throw it up against the rocks and bang it against bluff walls and stuff like that, and you're not going to break it. Other glide baits you're going to get on the market, especially if they're made of plastic, they're going to break, and you are going to struggle, especially if you're not the best at casting these bigger baits. Another thing I like about this Clutch Eco is it's very user-friendly to fish. I can basically just throw that thing out there and just give it a few twitches with the rod tip, and that bait's going to dart side to side and have a really nice chopping motion, which these fish really like. You can work it right up against a bluff wall or against shallow cover and basically set it right in place and get those fish to react. You can also weight it down like I do a lot of times on forward facing sonar with a little piece of lead wire on that front hook hanger and upgrade the stock hooks just a little bit to cause that bait to sink and you can sink it down in timber and trees and brush piles and stuff like that. These bigger glide baits have a lot more drawing power, and again, they get bit really, really well. And I find that I catch a lot of fish even on bigger glide baits than this. I'll throw the Boss from Clutch Co. and some of the other really big glide baits that are on the market that are anywhere from like seven and a half to nine inches long. And you're not gonna get a ton of bites on them, but you're going to get some big ones in the fall. So that's a really good bait to check out along with these baits right here. And again, if you're gonna be picking up swim baits in the fall, either go really small or pretty big. The second rule to fall swim bait fishing is that you wanna work your bait slowly above the level of the fish. A lot of times in the fall, you would think these fish are aggressive and actively feeding, so you wanna work your bait very quickly. But a lot of times I find that's actually the opposite of what you need to do with these swim baits. In general, I find I have my most success with swim baits in the fall when I try to work them about 10 feet above the level where I see the fish, whether I am fishing an offshore rock pile that I've scanned with side scan or down scan, and let's say the rock pile is in 20 feet of water and the fish are sitting on the rock pile. In that case, I wanna work my bait in 10 feet of water so that it's 10 feet above the level of those fish. Obviously you need relatively clear water for that three to five feet of visibility. But in general, if you can keep that bait further above the level of those fish, they're going to not get as good of a look at it and they're going to come up very quickly and eat these baits. If you get the bait too close to those fish and you bring it right at the level of the fish, they get too good of a look at it, it's too easy for them to sense that it's not real, and you just don't get as many bites at all. So I always try to keep that bait above the level of those fish, but I also wanna make sure I'm working the bait very slowly. There's two ways I do that. One, I really slow down the speed at which I'm reeling my reel. A lot of guys are going to reel their spinning reels pretty quickly with, with these swim baits, but if you look at these swim baits on forward facing sonar, if you reel like a normal reeling speed, you know, a revolution of the reel handle, 
maybe every half a second and you're bringing it in pretty quick, that bait is actually going to rise up, which is not very natural. You don't want that bait coming nose up back to the boat. You want it to stay pretty level. And so the way you do that is real extremely slow. So again, I'm just gonna toss my bait out here and kind of show you. I am going to barely turn that reel handle one rotation every second or even a rotation every two seconds. So when you rotate that reel, you want to reel that reel handle once per second or once every two seconds, a full rotation. That's going to keep that bait level in the water, especially these smaller swim baits. And then what you do is you adjust the weight of your jig head to fish the depth you want to fish. So if I'm trying to fish this bait in, let's say, five feet or less of water, those fish are pretty high in the water column, I'll throw an eighth ounce finesse tush in this mega bass spark shad where if I'm fishing, let's say 10 feet of water, or I want to put my bait in 10 feet of water, I'll go to the 3 16 ounce size. And then if I want to fish in 15 feet of water, I'm going to go to the quarter ounce size. So we have three sizes in that finesse tush, or if you're throwing a regular jig head, that's kind of my recommendation. And I'm always throwing this on six pound fluorocarbon leader on my spinning rod to 10 to 15 pound braided line on my main line. And my rod I'm throwing with these smaller swim baits is a seven foot medium moderate action spinning rod. Moderate action spinning rod is going to have a lot more give to it. So when those fish eat the bait, they have a chance to get that bait further in their mouth. So that's kind of my recommendation with these smaller swim baits. And the same thing applies with these bigger swim baits. A lot of times you want to make sure that you're fishing this glide bait, you're fishing it shallow, basically subsurface. And you want those fish to either pin the bait to the surface of the water or pin it right up against the bank in like inches of water. A lot of these glide baits are tuned so that they don't really sink that much. And a lot of guys will actually even put foam on the top of this bait to make it float even more and just basically barely be subsurface when they're fishing it right up against the bank. If you're fishing it deeper with forward facing sonar, you can obviously weight that bait down, but you don't want to weight it down so much that it's right in the level of those fish's face. You want it to be above those fish. And a lot of times, even if you're fishing in two foot of water visibility, I like to keep that glide bait five, six, seven feet above the level of those fish because this bait has a lot more drawing power being a bigger bait and they'll still come up and eat it. And the further you can keep this bait away from the fish while still getting their interest, the more bites you're going to get. You can experiment again with the weight of your jig heads or the amount of lead wire you wrap on your glide baits to determine how deep this bait needs to be on a given fishing day. And I would say that swim bait fishing in general is kind of more of an advanced technique than let's say fishing a shaky head or a drop shot or something. Cause you do have to really pay attention to the level that bait is relative to the fish to get the most number of bites. Sometimes fish are really aggressive. You can just fire that thing out there and reel it in and they'll eat it. But a lot of times, if you really want to dial it in and catch 15, 20, 30 fish a day on your little swim baits, it's really important to try to get that weight and that speed of your retrieve to make sure that bait is five to 10 feet above the level of those fish to get as many bites as possible. The third rule of false swim bait fishing is to make sure you're throwing your swim baits in either windy conditions or low light conditions. These windy and low light conditions are going to make it harder for these bass to actually see these little swim baits. And it's going to make them a lot more aggressive, especially when you're feeding when they're feeding in open water, basically you're throwing it out in the middle of the lake, maybe over the top of a brush pile, rock piles, or just down a random bank. The swim bait bite is very much a visual bite. There's not that much water that's displacing from these small swim baits. So if you throw it on a bluebird sky day with no wind and it's the middle of the day, you're going to struggle to get a lot of bites on these swim baits. You can get some bites, but you're gonna get a ton of followers. Instead, I have my most success with these swim baits either in the first few hours of the morning when you still have low light conditions or when there's at least like a 10 mile an hour wind. Also, if the lake is being pulled down for the winter drawdown, a lot of times lakes will drop like four or five feet so dock owners can work on their docks and the dam and stuff like that. When there's current flowing, you can get these fish to bite these swim baits as well really well because that water movement is kind of disturbing the water underneath and it kind of camouflages this bait and makes it a little bit less obvious to the fish. But again, when there's no wind, bluebird sky days like we have right now, not the best scenario for this swim bait, and you're going to struggle to catch some fish on it. Now, when you're throwing these little tiny swim baits, it's really hard to get bit on these in really strong winds because if it's really windy, it's hard to actually feel your bait, you'll have a big bow in your line and stuff like that. So 
you don't want to be fishing in like 20 mile an hour winds with these little swim baits, but a good five to 10 mile an hour breeze, get some water movement or some cloud cover or you know, first hour of the day, the last couple hours of the day are the time to throw these swim baits. The only exception to that is when you're actually fishing these bigger kind of glide bait style baits around thicker cover. So a lot of guys will throw these bigger glide baits around boat docks, around shallow laydowns, around marinas, uh, even just up against a bluff wall. And in a lot of those situations, you're gonna have shade lines. And that shade line is actually going to create or artificially create that low light condition that is conducive for getting these fish to actually eat this bait. So if you can find some shade, you can make this swim bait bite work really, really well. The same thing can kind of apply with these smaller finesse swim baits. This is kind of more of an advanced swim bait technique, but on Beaver Lake, I catch a lot of fish on these bluebird sky days with no wind around big boulders. Big boulders will sometimes on Beaver sit 15 feet tall, literally the boulder is 15 feet tall, and it casts a massive shadow. And I actually try to work my swim bait in the shadow of that boulder, depending on the sun position, and I can catch a bunch of big fish, uh, big smallmouth things like that, this time of year on Beaver in the fall because there's shade down there, there's low light, it camouflages that bait. Again, with the glide bait, you can do the same thing, just finding you know, a little shaded bank, like the one right behind me here, where there's just a little bit of shade. Maybe there's a big lay down tree where there's a shade pocket. If you can get your bait in that shade pocket, again, it camouflages that bait. But if you're throwing it open water, bluebird skies, no wind, you're gonna get a lot of fish to follow your swim baits. And it can be very, very frustrating. The strike zone for a lot of these fish is actually going to be pretty small on these swim baits, either in the fact that you need to get it in the perfect little shade pocket around the dock, or you need to have that bait, again, like we talked about in the second rule, 10 feet above those fish and kind of shimmering with some reflection on the surface from some wind or low light where they can barely see that bait or they're not, they're not really sure if it's real or if it's fake, and then they'll come up and absolutely destroy that thing if it's far enough away. But if it gets too close, they'll realize it's real. If that bait is not right in that shade pocket with this glide bait or right up against a, a bluff wall where they can't really see it until the last second, you're not gonna get those fish to commit. You're gonna have a lot of frustrating days with swim baits. So I would definitely say that swim baits are a, a more advanced technique. There are times when you can just go out and just throw your swim bait down the bank and absolutely crush them. But the same thing goes with a spinner bait, a crank bait, any of these moving baits. But if you do wanna make a swim bait a consistent player for you day in and day out, you wanna make sure you're following these three rules to get as many bites as possible and reduce the number of followers and increase the number of fish actually commit to your bait. The couple of baits that I have here are gonna be linked down in the description. I'll also link all the gear I'm using with these. I didn't go through everything with these glide baits and all that stuff. So I'll link all that down in the description if you guys wanna check it, check that out. And if you guys would actually uh, do one thing for me, if you're enjoying these videos and you're watching to the end, I really appreciate it if you went down below and clicked on my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link and bookmarked it. What you can do actually is bookmark that affiliate link that I have down in the description. And then every time you open up Tackle Warehouse, you basically are giving me credit for your purchases and it's a great way to support the Bass Fishing Declassified and Fish the Moment YouTube channels without having to worry about using the links every single time. It's just something that would really help me out and it's something I do personally just to make sure I get credit for my own purchases on Tackle Warehouse. So if you do enjoy this content and you're here at the end, I would really appreciate it if you did that. Thanks again for checking out this video guys and we'll see you in the next one.